Okay, I hope you all have enjoyed the trip to the waterfall and the river. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice experience. Actually, what I wanted to do uh, when the university reopened was to organize such expeditions. I call these scientific expeditions. And what we will do is we will make such trips, trekking to the jungle, trekking through the rivers, go to the beach and everything. And then we will incorporate a research element into it. Okay, it could be an expedition to search for wild prawns. It could be an expedition to search for different kinds of fish. And, and maybe we can do uh, coral surveys, marine, uh, all, all kinds of very fun expeditions. This is what I want to do uh, when the university reopens. So uh, you all can, are free to join me. And, and, but I think some of you may be in your final year. So most probably you will not get to join. But if you continue your masters or something like that, you, you, can, you are welcome to join anytime, okay? Uh, okay, so let's talk about the raceway. Uh, I, will build a, I have built a raceway and I want to show you. This is the prawn that we have caught in the river. Okay, they are very, they have a very strong pincer. And this one, this one over here is already um, with eggs on its uh, legs there. Okay, it seems that at this size, it's the, it has matured. So this is not, probably not the, the Malaysian giant freshwater prawn. And, and the, the natural habitat that we found them was in flowing rivers and flowing rivers and they hide in the creeks. So we know that they like a high DO environment and they like fast flowing water uh, interspaced with some refuge place for them. So this is what we are trying to create today. Now let's keep all this, this prawn in the shade first. Now this is the raceway that I was talking about. If you look at its shape, it's a race course. It's like a race course here. So the idea is the water will flow in this perpetual circular motion, non-stop, continuously. And the way to do this is to use a pump to power it. Like in, in the setting we're in, the river, the water flow one in, and one side out, so you culture your organism here. That system is known as a flow through. In this system, it's a recirculating system and it's a raceway system. So, it, mm, very often we don't have the luxury of having such a flow through system, a river flow through. Land by the river are very expensive, especially uh, prime land such as uh, with clear waters, those are very expensive. So, very often we have to use a recirculating model. Now, how we do is as the water goes here and it fills here, we want to draw the water from one end and then it emits the water back out from the other end. Draw and spit, draw and spit here. So it will go, it will uh, circulate in this manner. Alternatively, sometimes we can put a pump directly inside here to, to flow it. But in this case, let me introduce to you uh, uh, the diaphragm pump. There are many kinds of pump that we can use in aquaculture. Now the one we usually use in aquariums, those are centrifugal pump and this is a diaphragm pump. Diaphragm pump is different from normal submersible pump. It's because of its capability to pressurize water. Now this pump is very frequently used in agriculture as a sprayer because of its this is a DC pump. DC pump means direct current. The electricity in your house is known as AC, alternate current, and it goes up to 240 volts. Now, AC usually are more dangerous than DC because uh, it is a stronger current and if you can be electrocuted by it. DC, you can't really be electrocuted by it. In fact, um, when electricity first was started to be used in mass, there was a fight between whether to adopt the DC system uh, promoted by Edison or the AC system promoted by Tesla. Initially, Edison won. He, he promoted it on the basis that it is a safe electricity. And, but AC has the advantage of being able to be transmitted long distance. 
So over time, Tesla won. Uh, so AC was adopted in America first and then in worldwide as the standard electrical system. But DC is frequently used in electronics and devices such as this. Now DC, this is DC direct current, 12 volts, not watts, volts. So this is the, the amount of uh, voltage that is needed. It's usually stated in the pump, 12 volts here. And this is a car battery. I stole this from my car actually. And car battery is 12 volts. Okay, you don't have to worry about the currents. The currents will be given according to what it needs. But all you need to worry is about the voltage, 12 volts. So this is 12 volts. So if I plug it in, it's connected, it will run. Now let's test out this pump here. This is the input. And let me turn this on first. Okay. Uh, let me cut the... This... The pressurizing effect of this pump allows me to... Okay, my camera is wet. So I'm gonna spray here. Allows me to... Not a good idea. Here. Okay, allows me to use it for pressurizing equipment such as this pressure sprayer here. And this pump has a built-in shut-off function. The moment I turn off this, that means it's not moving. This is shutting off. Now, it is pulsing here because there is a leak here. If there is no leak, it will completely shut off. So, it is an automatic pump. Auto turn off and off based on whether you turn on the pump or not. But we are not using this for this today. So. Let me turn this off. Okay. So it is capable of being pressurized. We are using it for its water capacity. Now, let's let's fill this with water first. Okay, so this is the in and this is the out. You can see through the particles in there, it is flowing in this circular motion. We have already simulated a river, a perpetual river, a flowing system. Now, this is a very, very important tool in aquaculture. Okay, let me find a clip and clip on this first so that I can put my prawns in. Okay, so let's let mix let's see clearer. Okay, we can see. Okay, so we have a dead spot here, which is this. Now it flows fast at this straight. Okay, so let me adjust it a bit. We, we want to avoid all the dead spots. So let's draw the water here instead. Maybe here.
okay in this way it's going better yeah okay in a in a real operation i would want the turbulence for the dissolved oxygen but for this demonstration we want we don't want it to be blocked okay this Let me get another clip first. Now I've got the a nice configuration. It's going smoothly here. There's some vortex going on here. But okay, I don't want the water to be hot. So let's put our prawn in. Now this is the same water source. Uh, it has been living in this water so I don't have to acclimat acclimatize it. Oops. Uh, I have a hypothesis that the raceway system is actually the ideal system for prawn cultivation. It's, a, it's an underutilized technology for prawn culture. Usually they use it for even for microalgae culture, for, for fish culture, but I, it's not as widely used for prawn culture. And I think this is the closest simulation to its natural habitat as we have seen. Uh, in a in a good raceway, you will have areas where the prawns can go go into the fast flowing water, and if it wants to hide, like this case, there is a uh, an area of calm here where it can go to. So this is just like the river. See, if he wants to go into the current, he can't. If not, he can rest here, just like the nooks and crannies we caught them in. Now this raceway is just a two-lane raceway. You can actually build a multiple raceway, one here in a zigzag fashion. And as long as you want, the, the limiting factor of course is the pump that you use. It, it really seems like they are enjoying. Look at this. Now, some fish, they like currents. In fact, let me get some fish and put it in. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I have here my uh, zebra Daniel. What a wonderful simulation of the river. Now, very frequently in the aquarium, you can see my fish is uh, bordering on obesity here. And it's because they don't get to exercise that much. And with such system, we can actually make them exercise. Uh, perhaps when, when Xiamen reopens and when you all come back, um, maybe we'll do one project together where we'll, we'll ask for some spot in Xiamen and we'll dig a big raceway and just try something out like this. It'll be fun. Okay, so that's the end of our lecture for today and um, 
I trust that you have learned a lot about the pond system, the flow through system and dissolved oxygen. Okay, so these are some of the important concepts when we deal about culture system. And thank you for attending this lecture and I'll see you again in the next lecture.